Hello everyone and welcome back. So this should be the last video in session number seven. What we're going to do in this video is visit the stencil brush for a final time and get a, an iconic representation of all of the stencils in place so that an artist can see them. Right, just like the noise brush, this is going to be a contact sensitive panel that we're going to put in. But unlike the noise implementation part of it in the last video, I'm going to do my best to not make this one as big of a train wreck. So let's see what <laughs> happens. Oh, man, that, that was an interesting video. So That uh, was a lot of fun. Yeah. So it's 4.22 a.m. right now, meaning it's 5.22 your time. Yeah, we've been pushing it hard this whole week. Yeah, well, how many hours and videos did we pump out this week? It's 40-plus videos now? Yeah, 40-plus videos. So, all right, let's go find our stencil brush, which is here. So, go ahead and close everything down. We're going to need an on GUI for this. So, public. This won't be static, <laughs> I think. Hold on, let me look at my notes and see what I did. Because who knows what I was thinking, and you know, I think that's what got me in trouble last time. For an on GUI in an instanced. Yep, this one has to be static. Does it? Yep. Okay. Well, the way that I've got this all set up here. That's cool. No, I'm I'm not questioning you. I, I'm just match matching it up with my notes okay. because, you know, every time I seem to deviate from my notes, it bites me. So my notes say static. I'm going with it. Then I'll reappraise it after I get it working. Yeah, that's cool. So this is going to be a static void on GUI. Just like in the noise, we're going to be taking in a GUI skin. We'll call it skin, and we're going to pass that in. Doesn't return anything. Now inside of our train sculptor, where we do a check to see if our brush is a noise brush, we need to do a check to see if our brush is a stencil brush. If it is, then we're going to call the stencils, uh, the stencil brushes classes on GUI here. Okay. We need to pass in our skin. So we pass in the skin and put a semicolon. So that takes care of this part of the code. Back to the stencil brush. All right. Now, let me look at this kind of closely. And I'm just trying to check and see how this is done. Yeah, it, uh, if it would make sense to make this, or if I could make this a non-static. Well, with it being static, you have a reference to your uh, stencil brush through the static instance that you're holding. Well, in this particular case, I'm not going to pull those particular stencils because if I were to pull that stencil and populate it, that only gives us one stencil. I need yeah, to be able no. to pull all 19 stencils in this case. Right, right. So this is... Yeah, that's kind of why there's nothing in here that I need to reference inside yeah, of the instance. That's true. That's, that's which that's is why true. this is static mm -hmm. because we're just looking basically at the library. Yeah, and we're just printing that up to the screen. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah, and this one would definitely make sense where where you were discussing. We we could look at a folder and then just populate right. uh, um, all of the stencils based on what 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 it, yeah whatever was in that folder. This mm -hmm. would be a perfect uh, case to implement that, mm -hmm. but we're not going to do that. No, no <laughs> not at all. We're we're yeah. almost there, man. We're almost yep, there. Yep, yep. But you know, we could do that as a challenge to them if they want to do it. They could. All right. Now, what we need is a couple more fields. Because we're using a static method for on GUI, these are going to have to be static as well. We're going to need to hold a vector 2 for our scroll position. The reason why we need a scroll position is we're going to be using a vertical scroll area. So, our scroll view, 
it, technically it's just a scroll view, but we're just going to be using it as a vertical scroll instead of a um, vertical and horizontal. So we're going to hold our position. This is so the uh, begin scroll view knows how to position everything. We're also going to need to make a private static array of booleans that we're going to call stencils. And the principle behind this is the same as for our tools and our brushes. We're going to keep an array of booleans to de uh, determine the state of the toggles of whether so we can determine which one is currently selected and be able to go through and deselect all the other ones. So we will go ahead and set that up with an array of size max stencil count. Now we can come down here to our GUI and start coding stuff up. And just like we did with tools and brushes, we need to make a temporary array to hold all of the values of our um, stencils array before we go through all of the toggles. And then we have to come back, verify which one is checked, and then take action accordingly. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make a new Boolean array, again, of max stencil count. Okay, fine. I'll put the equal sign in. Seems how you're going to be so picky about it. All right. Let's go ahead and loop through every element in our array. So while i is less than our max stencil count, we will set the temp value element i equal to the stencils element i. This will give us our deep copy. So we can compare the two. And let's start off with our scroll position. So scroll position is going to be equal to what gets returned from GUI dot begin scroll view. We're going to give this a new rectangle to define its area on screen. That's going to begin at 423 with screen dot height minus 52. It's going to give it a width of 137 and a height of 50. You can go ahead and fix that typo back. Yeah, there. I'll put that in. Okie dokie. There we go. All right. Now, we also need to feed in our scroll position. So this is going to define where the window is currently positioned it's going to adjust it accordingly and then spit out a new um, scroll position which gets set over here. Right. After that we need to define a view rectangle and the view rectangle is going to be the size of the view that can be displayed at a single time. Mm -hmm. So this will be a new rectangle. It's going to start at zero by zero. So I want this to start in the upper corner or upper left corner of our scroll, uh, scroll view itself. I want it to be 125 pixels wide. That's going to give us enough room on the right hand side for our Ver, our vertical scroll bar and I want this particular window to be a hundred pixels high. Now, if you remember our scroll view is only 50 pixels high and I'm defining our window inside of that scroll view to be a hundred pixels so we can scroll up um, one additional view. So mm -hmm. it's twice the high twice the height of our scroll view. Now if we were dynamically allowing this to size this is the value that would have to grow in order to accommodate more rows of stencils. But because this particular instance is um, set with 19, I know that all 19 stencils can fit into four rows because we're going to have four rows of five with the last row being short a single uh, stencil. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Now from here, we define our skin for our horizontal scroll bar, which we are allowing to be default because we're not going to be using it. So our, it will be default, or we, nah, let me say this, in <laughs> English, <coughs> excuse me, is that our horizontal scroll bar that we defined in our skin inside of Unity hasn't been changed. It's the default settings that came with our new uh, GUI skin. And because we're not using it, I, I don't really care about it. Now, I do care about this vertical one because I want to change the look of the vertical scroll bar. So we did change that. So let's go ahead and wrap this over so it doesn't go off the screen. So we're going to use our vertical scroll bar, which is overloaded from the default. So we will get a slightly different look of our scroll bar. Now with every begin scroll view, it needs to have its counterpart of an end scroll view. And if you don't do this, you'll get a very nasty error. So I usually do this first before I do anything else. And then once I've got my begin and my end defined, I can go back and then start putting stuff inside of our viewer itself. Now, you got to remember, every um, GUI control that we put in between a begin and an end, the positional information that we put inside of that new rectangle is all relative to the position inside of our scroll view. So if I want something to be aligned in the upper left hand corner of this scroll view, I need to position it at zero by zero, not its actual screen space information. So that's kind of the trick to um, dealing with any elements inside of a begin and end. So I'll start off without putting in the extra code, but I'll just put in our toggle real quick so you can see what this looks like. So if I can spell toggle, there we go. So we start off with our toggle. Our very first um, stencil um, thumbnail is going to begin at zero by zero. And it's going to have a width of 24 and a height of 24. That's a, as opposed to trying to figure out where it would be on the screen. We just go, this is the very first one. I want it in the upper left. It'll be 0 by 0. The next one will be 25 by 0, and such, so on and so on and so on. So at least that part's fairly simple once you realize what it's doing. Now, inside of here, this is going to be looking for the value that we have at stencils.0. And we're going to use our resources.load. Got to make Jason cringe. It's so much fun. It's all good. And this will be alpha zero. Make sure that it's a texture two or a texture 2D, not texture two. And that we're using our skin. Now this one is a little bit different. If you remember, we defined a custom skin as opposed to using one of the um, pre-included styles like box and button and toggle. We went and created a, a custom style, not mm -hmm. a custom skin, my bad. So to get access to a custom style, we use the get style method, which is looking for a string. So we called that style, I believe, stencil. And it helps if you put that in quotations because it's the string. It won't understand it if you don't. So this will use that uh, piece of information. Yeah, I'll leave it wrapped. That's fine. Now, we also need to set this. So I'm going to take the same one and I'm going to set it. So what it's doing is it's looking at that toggle. If we press the button, it's going to set this to true. If we if it was already set to tr or if this was set to false, we push the toggle, this gets um, flipped to true. If it's set to true and we push it again, it gets flipped to false. 
which is the default behavior of toggle, but we want to use this as kind of a group toggle, which is why we're using the array of stencils, just like the, uh, the tool and the brush buttons. It's all the same concept. This is just a, a little bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit more complex solution in the fact that we've got 19 of them as opposed to four, but it's still the base principle all the way around. Mm -hmm. So if I run this and I hit T and we hit stencil, hey, hey. we get our very first stencil. Now, something's going on here because we've got this bar, so things aren't lining up exactly right. We shouldn't see this at all. And this one isn't lined up exactly right, but it does function. So we're seeing the slider up and down. So. Well, hang on. I, well, never mind. Whoop, whoops, sorry. What were you going to do? I was just going to dry drag the inspector a little bit to the right. Oh, the CF uh, adjusting it? Mm-hmm. Just, just it shouldn't. Up. Well, it shouldn't because these are not positional related. Mm -hmm. So, if we hit T. Oh wow, we both hit it at the same time. Nice. Oh, that's. Wait a minute. Um, now this is this is my turn to be crazy. I forgot we're dragging this yep. one. <laughs> yep. Because if, if you recall, it was what yesterday I told you that the uh, the one with the stencil and all we should drag that one because that'd be yeah. cool. Yeah, and I said you're more... crazy because of the complexity. Exactly, of making it working. Go, so, oh no, it'd be easy. So in my head, I was still thinking that that was the one that we had switched over to to show them something a little more interesting. But no, no, no. <laughs> oh, so you're saying what I'm showing is not interesting? I oh, got be it. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's go find out what's wrong. Yeah. All right, so let's see. I've got a value of 423. That's right. Screen height, yeah, minus 52, 137, 50, 0, 0, 125, and 100. Okay, so that is all right. These stencils are right, so something is still not happy with me. All right, so let's go and figure out what setting that I must have missed inside of the GUI skin because it's probably going to be a, some sort of padding thing that I'm missing. So I'm firing up Unity real quick on my computer. And if I bring up the vertical scroll bar, And then on ours, nope, we're dealing with vertical scroll bar, not the stencil yet. All right, so border zero, negative three, and I set my fixed width to eight, uh -huh. as opposed to 16. So. The nice thing is these we can adjust while it's running. There we go. All right, so basically fixed width is adjusting the width of the vertical scroll bar. So everything's getting shifted. And you can also see it's taking my separator and kind of fattening it up compared to what it looks like here. So by fixed width, I'm just making everything a little bit smaller. And then it gives me a nice sharp line for my slider to work up and down on. So that takes care of that problem. All right. So go ahead and stop this. Jump back over into code. And this next bit isn't too bad. So we'll take this. We're going to copy it four more times. So one, two, three, four. Now switch over to the insert. So one, two, three, and four. Same here. And again here. 
And it'd be awesome if we had some way of simplifying this, like some sort of loop. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Hmm. Let me think about that. Hmm. Okay, I'm going into on-the-fly coding. This ought to be fun. All right. Four. And this will be X. No, Y. <laughs> Bet you love it when I do this. All right, so our number of rows. Two. Well, I know. I know there are five, so I'm going to take our max stencil count. I know that I'm. Oh, uh, was it five to... rows of uh, icons? Well, no, it's uh, it's five columns of icons, four tall. So I'm going to take our max stencil count, divide it by five. And that will give us our count up to Y. I keep forgetting that we have so many of those things. What's that? Oh, yeah, that we have 19 of them? Yeah, I yeah. keep picturing just uh, two uh, just uh, two rows in my head. Oh, no, you only see two rows. At yeah, I, no, I know, and that's Y. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So this next one will be X. And while is less than five, so that will handle. Well, yeah. Let me finish uh, changing those values. Otherwise, it'll really be confused. All right. Now, let's make a variable called var, and this will be our index. I could just do I, I'll do index, equals um, y, let's see, y times x, or y times 5 plus x. So that should increment me up as needed. Let's copy one of these. So stencil. index. So we're going to take that index, we're going to take this index, and I'll convert this to B plus index to string. And let's wrap this around for readability. And where my icon go? Well, I can see the uh, carrot. As yeah. All right. So this will take our index here, our index here, our alpha index. We need to take. So this will be, yeah, x times oops, twenty five. And this will be y times 25. And if that works, I can kill all this stuff. All right, let's see what explodes. So, so what happens? Yay! Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Hold on, one, two, three. Okay, so we're still off by one. We're missing one realm. All right. So, so that will be y. So less than or equal to. Let me think about that, if that's going to be right. So 19 divided by 5 is rounding to 4. So that's where we're getting our issue. So how do I make sure 
that Y counts accurately. Mm. So far, um, this would be rows equals this. And now I need to determine whether or not there's a fractional part. So we're going to take that plus. Now if I take that again, but use mod, so yeah, mod's the remainder, so if mod is greater than zero, you gotta love doing math at six o'clock in the morning. All right, so if our remainder is greater than zero, then we are going to take our max stencil count divided by 5 plus 1 else it's just going to be our max stencil count divided by 5. You had to do that, didn't you? I thought you promised me you were going to fix that. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> you lied to me? Just like everybody else in my life? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's give that a shot. Hold on. Why is that grayed out? Code is unreachable. Max stencil. If I mod something by 5, it's greater than 0. All right, now I'm confused. Why would... What's your... Uh... What's your changing variable? What's that? My changing variable? Oh, wait, no, 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 never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. I didn't even realize you pulled it out of the for loop. That's pretty funny. <laughs> now who's completely uh, shut down? Well, yeah, I'm glad we're at the last video because I'm toast. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right, so let's do this. Um, if we divide by 5F... So, if um, we divide by 5F and I need to subtract our max stencil count divided by 5 from there, so 1 will give me a, um, a fraction, 1 will give me an integer, and then if that is greater than 0, then will you cooperate with me? No. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, I don't want to. Well, you're just throwing numbers at it. <laughs> Not really. Okay, fine. Let's just do the floor. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause and let okay. you take as much time as you want. Thanks. Actually, I want to just keep going and see if you fell asleep. Uh, I'm just about, but when I hit pause, I will. Be right yeah. back. Yeah, go hit pause. Okay, Lee, it's all yours. All right. The the part that was throwing me, it was funny as Jason had mentioned it, but it, it's like going, he's like going, so what's your changing value? Well, max stencil count is the value that can change. Which but was, that's a constant. I do want to just throw in, though, which was funny because I still, for whatever reason, saw all of that sitting inside the for loop. But but yeah. the compiler, it's a constant. The compiler knows the outcome already. Of course, we'll never hit over there. It's always going to be point 0.8. Right. But in our terms, the fact that we could 
change that variable or that constant to be 27 or 2. The compiler isn't aware of that at compile time. It can't. So it's, is, not, it's not yep. a variable. It's a constant. Yep, it's a constant. So it doesn't know that it's changeable. It's at not changeable. It, really? Hold on a sec. You've got to recompile, though. And, <laughs> and as soon as you put that number in, the compiler is going to immediately know if it's reachable or not. Yeah, but in the in compiler's term, it's not changeable. It's not but variable. I can absolutely change it. I never said variable. The whole you could yeah you could also delete the entire code file out too. But the compiler never saw that coming. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Control A. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying it's constant, not variable. Okay, how however you want it to be. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Can I change it? You can do anything you want. Yeah, that value can be changed, so it's variable. Yep. Then you got to go recompile. <laughs> Well, yeah. So it's Which constant. <laughs> Semantics. Um, okay. Well, it is. Okay. It depends on – in terms of the, the compiler, yes, it is absolutely constant. When running, that is not a variable yes. number. Yes. Code can never change that. I will agree with you. It is a constant. Actually, I wonder if you could change it. I bet you could change it. I bet there is a way that you could go in and find some screwy memory way of changing that. Stay on target. Sorry, <laughs> getting sidetracked. Nelson would probably know how to do it. But I'm willing to bet it could be done. Oh, what were we doing again? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so this code will compile and do exactly what I want it to do, which is going to give us a value of 5 because we've got a constant that says 19. 19 divided by 5. 5f is 3.8, 3.8 minus uh, 19 divided by 5, which is 3, equals 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is greater than 0. Therefore, it's going to take our max tensile count divided by 5, which is 3. Add 1, or uh, 3, add 1 to it, that's 4. So now we'll loop through this 20 times because we'll go to 0 to 4. And it should be, yeah, less than equal to, so less than 4. Get the rid of the equal. So this will go from 0 to 4. And then x, 0 to 5, this will, or less than 5. So it will go through. It will iter iterate through this. So index at its highest value will be 20, which will exceed our index. So we need to deal with that case. So if... We uh, end up with well, if index is greater than our max stencil count, then we need to break. Let's get completely out of this. So, are we, we still one off there? Yep, we're going to still be inside of this inner loop. So we need to make another addition here that does the same check again to make sure that we get completely out of the entire uh, nested loop system. So this will or should break us completely out, but unfortunately index is being defined here. So I need to take this now, put it up here, set it equal to zero. So we're initializing it here. And we're just setting it there. So that should get us through everything. Give us all 19 of our stencils in our window. And if we can close that without giving us an array out of bounds. At least I hope so. So here's our stencil. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh. You're one off. Am I off by one again? I think so. Okay, we're we're here, so oh yeah, because max index is nineteen. Mm -hmm. We've got to adjust for eighteen. Off by one. Um, it helps if I'm actually in the right computer. Come on. There we go. Alright, so sense account minus one. So 
Once again, we'll try it. I don't know, it probably would have been easier to just copy and paste the whole 19 lines. Okay, there's all 19 of our stencils. No out of bounds. And it's a little bit cleaner than the original um, R&D stuff. Actually, it's a lot cleaner. Still could be better, though. All right, now, that just takes care of drawing our buttons. We still don't have anything for dealing with if the toggle is selected and we're changing stuff up. So to deal with that, we will end the scroll view, which we've got here. And then after the scroll view is done, we need to go through and do our checks. So we're going to do a check against our max stencil count. And then for each one, and I can get rid of this. For each time through, we need to compare our temp element I is not equal to our stencils element I. The moment that is true, we need to do some things. What we need to do is set stencils equals to a new Boolean array of max. Oh, that won't work very well, will it? All right, max stencil count. This will reset everything to false. We'll set stencils sub i equal to true. We need to call the or tell the property to set current ID to I. This will force all of the uh, stencil updates to both the stencil and icon. And then finally, we're going to break out of this loop and continue our on our merry way. So if we go ahead and build this, and once again, my computer wants to restart. I think that comes up once in an hour. Wow. So, yeah, and I've seen that an awful lot today. All right, so here's our stencil. Now, if I look, and I hit plus, there's soft, there's hard. So all of these seem to be working. But if I hit our plus and minus, we can see that we're not getting the updates here inside of our uh, little context panel. So let's go deal with that. That is going to be handled in Terrain Sculptor, and I'm trying to find my notes. I know where my notes are. i got to try to find it in my notes, which is a whole different ballgame. And let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, I was in the completely wrong file for that one. Awesome. That's going to be way up here. Inside of current stencil ID. There. Okay, cool. All right, back over here into code. If we scroll all the way up to the top, inside of current stencil ID, where we go and do our checks before we go ahead and update our stencil and icon, we're going to take our stencils, we're going to reset them. I did it again. I almost did it again. That would have been really bad. So we'll set that and then we'll set stencils, current stencil ID to be equal to true. So if we go back. And wait for it to start up. Hit T. Hit stencil. 
And if we cycle through our plus and minus, we can see that it is indeed working. Let's see if we wrap like we need to or if it explodes. So it's wrapping to the end, wrapping to the beginning. Here's our stencil. So I can cycle through all of them and we can see that that's working. Very nice. And I can also go through and manually select, pick whatever I want and everything updates the way it needs to be. Awesome. So there are definitely some refinements. Again, this slider has the same problem as the others. If you're dragging and dropping and you go off of this while you're still holding the brush down or the tool down, button down on the mouse, it will try to fix it. Sculpt the train. TV. So, yep, you guys need to fix it. And if you want another neat little trick, find a way that when the current selected brush is toggled beyond the slider, that the slider updates to scroll to show or keep the selected brush in focus. So you could do that. Another thing that you could do is adjust, you know, maybe this slider so it clicks at uh, one row at a time instead of being able to halfway through it. Mm -hmm. Just little th fun things that you could play with to oh, refine. All sorts of things. Just as a quick reminder, this – Everything dealing with the UI here is, like I said at the beginning of this UI part, just think of this as kind of bonus stuff because it's not something that we had to throw in place for the um, the basic sculpting system. That worked with hotkeys and was good enough for us to move on into vertex caching and persistence. But I uh, just thought it would still be cool for those of you that have never worked with Unity GUI elements before to get in there and, well, get to see some of it. You want to know the funny thing is? What's that? The code that we redid on the fly to adjust our, or to loop through and build out all of the uh, stencils mm -hmm. with a simple change in a couple of spots could easily be set up to change the number of rows, which would give us the ability to dynamically size that. Well, there's, there's all sorts of things that we can do. Yep. I mean, but... Uh... Anything else that you want to add for this section? I mean, the goal from the beginning was to be able to use a series of hotkeys to control tools and brushes and to be able to manipulate the vertices in a predictable manner, which we've, we've got all of that and, and more now with the uh, UI and all the stencils and everything. Well, there's a lot of stuff I'd like to add to this no, I mean, section. Add as in final words. Oh, oh as in final words? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, thanks for bearing through the last two videos. <laughs> yeah, we they apologize, but at the same time, you know, we already said the R&D videos are going to be kicked back, relaxed, and uh, what time is it? 5.08 my time, so 6.08 Lee's time, and I've got five hours of sleep between two days now. And, uh, and I Lee's, think I'm at about eight. Yeah, so <laughs> I can't think well right now. I'm surprised I'm still talking. I'm I'm going to bed in a minute. This time around, I'm not going to be encoding these videos as soon as we get done because I'm exhausted. But still, you know, um, it should give Gavin and a few of you others out there something to laugh at and, and hopefully enjoy. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fully functional. You've got everything you need to go and have fun painting out your terrain right now. Just don't walk away from it. But, you know, you can have fun with it as is. Um, please just take this as um, rough concepts, a as suggestions of ways that things could be done. It's not the only way it can be done. And I highly encourage you guys to take this, make it your own, play with it, and expand upon it and show us some really cool stuff that you're doing. There's nothing that says that everything that you do has to be exactly the way we did it. Yeah, hopefully you'll you know receive an education from these videos and – can do exactly like Lee said, just expand upon it, be unique, come up with something on your own. But uh, with that, that's going to wrap up session seven. Now, who's to say, you know, that we don't come back to it with an errata at some point later? But at this point in time, we do have a basic sculpting system, which is what we set out to get in place so that when we get persistence and the caching working for vertices, it's, it's just going to be really nice because we can go and manipulate our geometry and verify that it's all working, the persistence and all. So 
Uh, thank you guys very much. And that concludes this video and session seven.